Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is the newest Marvel film. Is it any good? How many times will I butcher that name? Are there any spoilers in this review? All those questions and more will be answered, especially the spoiler one. No, there's not going to be spoilers. Let's get started. If you're new to this channel, you should be like Thor and hammer that subscribe button because I put out a lot of content, almost daily at this point. But enough about me. Let's talk about Sean, played by Simu Liu. Gonna be butchering names on this video, I apologize. Sean, aka Shang-Chi, is on the run from his past life. He's in hiding, he's, he's tried to start over from events that have taken place that were mainly out of his control. He and his best friend Katie, played by Aquafina, are valets. Nothing against the profession, but it's safe to say these two aren't living up to their full potential. A big red flag for me right out of the gates was Aquafina being in this film. The last thing I heard her in was Raya and the Last Dragon. She was the voice of said dragon, and I couldn't stand it. Couldn't stand her performance there. I was a little troubled going in, a little worried. Thankfully, she was quite a joy here. Her relationship with Sean is one of the highlights of the picture. There are a couple of goofballs that don't take things too seriously in life. I know, it's, uh, it's kind of a playbook Marvel thing. Most of their characters are a little screwy, um, but you know what? They're lively. They're, they're fun to listen to. They crack jokes. They fight well, they learn things very quickly, uh, and yeah, that's it's formulaic. But as the expression goes, if it ain't broke, keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again! Until eventually people will get sick of it. So far, I'm not quite there yet. I enjoyed Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings quite a bit. This is once again an origin story for a new character in the MCU. We, we've seen a dozen or so of those. It follows the playbook, although the way it tells the story is a little out of sorts. We do a lot of jumping back and forth as the movie progresses, learning new little bits of information that make the hero uh, more likable, more respected, a little bit more layered, more nuanced as the story unfolds. But ultimately, you know, we have our we have our beginning, middle, and end storytelling structure, and things play out exactly how you expect them to. I can only speak for myself here, but I grew up with Jackie Chan films. Rumble in the Bronx, Third Strike, Operation Condor, the more mainstream ones as well, such as Rush Hour or Shanghai Noon. The sequel, Shanghai Nights, wasn't very good. I can understand why they didn't make a third. Although I always feel like it's missing something when you don't complete the trilogy. You know, I'm still waiting for Gremlins 3. As I was saying, Shang-Chi has a ton of awesome action. It's got more action in it than any of the other MCU movies. I think that that's, I can say that comfortably. And they do a really good job of juggling between plot progression and then more ass kicking. Plot progression, punching someone in the face, and it's good action. We got a lot of choreographed, hand-to-hand, -hand, foot to face CG rings to stomach action at play. One of the earliest fights features Sean and Katie on a bus as it's traveling out of control because the brakes were shot. This fight goes on for like 7 to 10 minutes. I am a sucker for a good fight on an out of control vehicle. It's so good. The movie does a great job marrying a lot of different types of combat. You have the old school, like I said, Jackie Chan style plus crouching tiger hidden dragon thrown in for good measure, and then of course the updated effects with you know CG characters jumping all around the place. Some of it, of course, gets very Looney Tunes at times. You wonder, I get he's got magical rings on, but should he be able to like fall off of a building onto the ground and not break his legs? Why is his sister just as good at it? I Marvel, Marvel logic. Visually speaking, it's a Marvel movie. There isn't much style to it. It's more on the side though of Ant-Man 2 and occasionally drifts into a Black Panther situation more than say Endgame or Civil War or you know any of the Russo brother films. Ton of effects work going on, tons of CG. Most of it, it's Marvel again, it's passable. There's, there's some rough spots, especially there, there was a point which, which looked really bad where uh, Sean gets punched and he's like flops through the water. The water effects are awful. But then you got cool shit later, which I won't spoil, but it looks beautiful. So yeah, it goes back and forth, a little, little messy. One thing I notice, and this I can't say for certain is uh, the film's fault or if it was the theater I saw it at, but it, it, it feels like it's about 15% more zoomed in than it should be, especially during combat scenes. I know they choreographed a lot of this, they had to, but there's moments where I feel like it's just really tight. It needed to pull back. 
Now, it is possible it was the projector settings or something because as words were coming up on the screen, some of the words were getting cut off below. If you're a parent wondering if it's suitable for your child who's maybe seen some of these other ones in the past, uh, yeah, I think so. There's a bit more swearing than I was expecting. I mean, it's still, you know, PG-13 or PG... I don't even know what these movies are anymore. G at this point. There was some more swearing. There's some shits thrown into the mix. I didn't. I don't think there was any F-bombs dropped. I know they can get away with that once in a while. You can get away with one or two, I think, in a PG-13. They don't do that. But yeah, just a few more of the, the S-words for you. Uh, Violence-wise, like I said, there's a ton of action. I don't think there's any blood at all uh just a lot of you know punches and kicks and, and ring stuff going on the ring shit is awesome though if i was a wee one watching this film today oh man i'd be a kid in the candy store i'd be going home having fake fights with my brother using those power rings <laughs> and then jumping up the rings <laughs> He's using them like a double jump in a video game. Some really cool slow motion combat where people throw punches and it's like. Just eating that up. I'm eating that up. Here's a troubling one. The music, the score. I noticed at the end in the final battle, it was pretty epic. It was pretty cool. Not sure it was memorable because I don't remember it. Uh, there was music throughout, it seemed to work with the film, but I, I would almost have to see it or hear it again to know for sure. And I don't really want to see this again. I could watch it for sure, it's easily watchable, and I, I will on, you know, when it gets to Disney Plus or whatever it's going to be on. I just don't have a desire to go back. You know, it's very much like all the other Marvel movies outside of the big ones. It, it's, it's, it's solid, but I get it. I'm good. I think it's probably obvious that I didn't know this character going into this film. Am I a fan? Absolutely. Do I want to see more of him? Of course. Every time now one of these new characters is introduced, I always think, oh man, it would have been cool if he was in Endgame. Or maybe we'll get an, an, another Endgame type scenario of 10 films down the road with the new cast, and maybe we can bring back some of the old ones, and then I would be super happy. You know, let's get all these people in it somehow. Dust off old Robert Downey, dust off Tony Stark, you know, tie some strings on him, marionette him to life, do whatever you have to do, get him back into these things. So was it worth it to see in theaters? For me and the kids, yeah, it was. It's the first time they've been to a movie in like two years. Um, you know, as long as it's a safe situation in your area, I, I, I'd say check it out. If you're a fan of going to the theater, if not, yeah, go ahead and wait on streaming. It's not like you're gonna you're gonna lose out on anything uh, for waiting four or five more months down the road. Those are my thoughts on Shang Chi. If you saw it, leave a comment below. Let me know. Like the video if you had a good time, and remember hit that subscribe button. I, I'd like to have you around here as much as possible. All right, take care. Aquafina surprised me. She really did. Oh, you're still here. Hey, since you stuck around, maybe think about supporting me on Patreon or right here on YouTube via the join button. You can, you can find me at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's links in the description. Otherwise, like I said, just become a member here. Show your support. Say, Adam, I love what you're doing. I'd like to help you out. Keep the channel alive and well. And uh, I'd appreciate it a lot.